Hey everybody, it's Father Dave here in the library of St. John the Evangelist Church in Susquehanna, part of <clears throat> our parish, Most Holy Trinity. And so great to be with you to share a couple moments uh, again here in the library. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a blessed Advent. I hope you're at peace with all the different ups and downs uh, I know we're all having during these these strange days. Uh, um, but again, you know, as this weekend, we're going to be talking about uh, the joy that comes from the Lord, one of the gifts of the Spirit, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, for asking the Lord to increase His joy within us, it was one of His goals. He said, I came so that my joy could be in you and your joy could be complete. Uh, we have something that can't be taken away, not even by uh, something like a pandemic. Similar to the way St. Paul talked about love. You know, what can separate us from the love of Christ? There's really nothing. If we allow that joy and love to really dwell within us. So let us hope that this uh, Gaudete Sunday, which means joy, rejoicing, can be a real day of joy for us and we can be a joyful presence to each other, especially, you know, family at home, maybe the people we work with or even strangers we meet, you know, out there uh, in our travels, because we never know what, you know, a, a, a joyful greeting might really do for a person's day. So we just pray we'll be able to do that. Let us say a little prayer right now. And we, Lord, we ask your blessing on everyone watching. We pray for everybody's intentions. Remember all those who are sick or having any kinds of trials. Uh, for your peace to be with them, uh, your grace, your joy, and your love as we ask your blessing. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're just going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things we're still looking at and planning for our parish, Most Holy Trinity. Something I think a lot of other parishes are doing too. <clears throat> We're looking to uh, really get back to basics in the Christian life so that we can grow the church, so that we can build God's kingdom. And we do that by bringing uh, new people into the community, touching the lives of those who maybe don't have any relationship with the Lord. And maybe for no other real reason that they were never invited. And so we know we've been going through different series in the homilies, this is all part of what we're calling uh, rebuilt, you know, taking our basic building blocks and getting them all back in order so that we can be built into the kind of community and church that's really going to be doing the Lord's work, putting the Lord first and putting uh, His uh, great uh, concern first too. And that was always seeking the lost. And so that's what we need uh, to be about. It is great to be a community but we need to be going beyond ourselves and trying to touch the lives of others um, out there. And so that's what we're planning to do. We probably already saw some little ways we've been trying to do this. Even before the uh, COVID hit, we were doing some things like having some kind of uh, gathering after Mass with some, uh, you know, could have been coffee and donuts or maybe, you know, sort of a cheese plate and wine at one time, little things. That's just so people could get together for some quality time after the Mass. Other things we're doing be like our message series, trying to spend more time on these different topics so that we can hear over and over again, really, like what are the five steps to growing uh, in the faith? So it would be serving in a ministry and a tithing or sacrificial giving, entering into a small group with other Catholics to share the faith with each other, uh, doing our own prayer time, which is going to include also not just my own private prayer, but uh, prayer with the community, especially at the Mass. And finally, uh, doing something is sharing our faith with a person who is not a member of any faith. And so we try to identify the person, uh, invest our time in them by praying for them, uh, getting to be with them friendly. We want it to be sincere. It's not that we're trying to put anything over on anybody, but then to invite, you know, maybe you'd be interested in coming uh, to our uh, worship service, our Mass. I could go with you. We could, you know, uh, offer to accompany the person, sit with them at Mass, or, or maybe the easiest thing of all, watch you know, one of the videos with them, and they could see at least a little bit of what's happening at the community and hear something um, of the message. So we really want to help to grow the kingdom and reach these other people. We're going to kind of call them by generic names, Susquehanna, Sam, and Susquehanna Sioux. There's people that are here in our communities. Studies show there's a lot of people around in every community uh, who are disconnected and who, if we approach them in the right way, would be happy to come 
and be one with us. And that's something that would benefit us too, because we don't want the community to shrink. We want it uh, to grow. We want to build for a future. We also want to get back to where we're, you know, not, not just reaching new people, but real, realizing when they do come, that that's, in a sense, the most important person in the church. And so we want to do things like make it easy for them to park. So maybe we who are the regulars would uh, uh, maybe not take the, the closest space. Um, we're hoping to have greeters even in the parking lots eventually, maybe even with umbrellas. As a matter of fact, we have the umbrellas. The kids were all set to kind of start that. And again, things shut it down and uh, haven't been able um, to do it. Or maybe giving them a preferred spot to sit in the church and making a point of saying, oh, you're new here, welcome. You know, we hope you're going to enjoy your experience. We hope you're going to want to come back. Another thing would be to have a little bit of a welcome center at the church on Sunday so that people can get all the information about the parish, maybe even do things like join the parish or get a mass card or things like that, make it everything as easy as possible for them. The same thing with the website, you know, so that they can uh, very easily find out all the information, uh, take, you know, sign up for things, maybe even donate uh, to the parish. So we're going to be working um, on that. So we want to call them our, our VIPs, those very important people who we're looking to invite in and then give them a very excellent experience at Mass where they'll want to come back and to stay with us. You know, there's other things too. We want to be as uplifting as we can uh, with our message and with our worship and with the music. Uh, you know, this is supposed to be, as we're going to be talking about on this third Sunday of Advent, about joy. We should give people an experience of joy uh, when they come as best as we can. And so these are going to be things we'll be looking at, and we're going to want to increase our use of things like uh, media. You know, we're already doing a lot with that, with that right now with the YouTube and Mass, but there's ways we can expand on that. So uh, to give the visual experience an improvement at Mass, and also uh, hearing all those uh, different aspects that go in to helping a person really engage with the prayers of, of the Mass. And so along with that, we're hoping that everybody will grow in some type or other of leadership, that we're going to be taking more and more ownership. That doesn't mean this is my turf, this is my territory, and I'm not going to let anybody else trespass. No, it means I'm going to be leading people and guiding people closer to the Lord according to my own gifts, because that's really what we're, we're called to do. So those are things we're going to be looking at. Again, we're calling it uh, rebuilt. You can see some parishes and other places that have gone a long way with this. One in particular would be Nativity in Timonium, Maryland. So there's a spot and we've actually uh, visited with them and are in communication with them to hear about how they did things and how maybe we can do something uh, similar here in our own little uh, uh, part of the world. Well, one of the things we're talking about coming up is, is Christmas, but you're going to have an opportunity, if you maybe already saw it on the news, to see the Star of Bethlehem, basically the same event in the night sky that happened when Jesus was born. The last time it happened was in the year 1226, and that was on December, well, it was always on uh, the 21st of December. No, actually, that one was on a different day, March the 4th in 1226. Uh, so what is going to happen is we're going to be seeing for a few days before the 21st and a few after, it's going to be Venus and Jupiter that are going to be coming into a conjunction, which means they're going to be coming very close together, at least the way it looks in the night sky. And there's also going to be another star in alignment, Regulus, which is going to add some brightness to those two uh, planets. If you have a telescope, you'd even be able to see uh, their moons. But basically, <clears throat> what the wise men saw was these two planets coming close uh, together. And it's going to be, if you want to see it, we're going to have to go outside looking west towards the horizon around dusk, a little bit after, so it gets dark enough so we can see the stars. But it can't be too long after dusk because the planets are going to dip below the horizon and we won't be able to see them anymore after that. But hopefully you'll have uh, the interest and the opportunity and hopefully a clear sky on one of those nights, or maybe a couple of them, because we're told by the astronomers, if you go a couple nights before the 21st, you can kind of get your bearings and see where those two planets are and see how they're going to come. Uh, basically, the one-fifth the width of a full moon. That's what it's going to look like in the sky. It's going to look like a double uh, planet. So 
let's take a look. It's not going to be around again for a long time, another almost thousand years before it happens again. So this is a great opportunity to see something that uh, we know people who knew and lived with Jesus saw in the night sky at the time of his birth. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs>